so what is network the connection or the interconnection between the autonomous computers is what i will call it as a network arpanet as well as nfs net plays a very important role to set the model for the internet hello everyone i welcome all of you to the first session on computer networks before i start the session i would like to give you that what exactly i'm going to discuss in this chapter so please listen to me and watch the complete video it's going to be a treat for all of you those who love computer networks so what is that i'm going to discuss in this session i will be discussing about the computer networks what exactly computer network is all about and what is the benefits of computer network is what i'm going to discuss in this topic the second one that i have is evolution of networking so who started this network so when was it established or when was it introduced is what i'm going to discuss in evolution of networking after that we have something called arpanet so this is the first internet that we had this is the first network that we had and what is the use of this network and how it evolved all those things i will be discussing when it comes to the arpanet then after that i think all of you know about it let me not stress more on this internet and a special thing that we have for the session is interspace what exactly this interspace is all about so all of us are having online classes right now right so that is the best example that i can speak with respect to interspace what is that let's understand that in detail when it comes to interspace the next one that i have is switching techniques what exactly switching techniques is all about the different types of switching techniques is what i will be discussing with all of you so we have message passing we have circuit switching and we have packet switching so we will be discussing in detail one by one the last topic for the day is data communication terminologies so please understand we have all this topics in this session i will be discussing with all of you without wasting much of your time let me get into the session with the first topic that i have for the day is computer networks what exactly computer network is all about so please imagine all of you just we have only one system if i have one system i am not connected to any other systems if i don't get connected to any other systems then how do i send a message how do i access the files in another system and how do i use how do i use message passing systems or how do i share my resource so to solve all these problems we started using or we started connecting one computer to another computer so by connecting one computer to another autonomous computer we started forming the network so what is network the connection or the interconnection between the autonomous computers is what i will call it as a network and why should i have this network so with the help of network i will be able to share the resource so what is the meaning of sharing the resource say for example i have 100 systems in one building or i have 100 systems in my floor so i just need to have only one printer i will connect all the 100 systems to one network and i will connect the same printer to the same network so is that possible to access that printer by everybody of course yes so imagine this is one case imagine i don't have the network now i have all 100 systems are individually placed i will call that as a stand alone machines so in that particular case i have to give the printer for each and every people that i have it's a costly affair for me so how do i solve this so for that reason we have the concept called network which will help me to share the resource not only the resource i can also share the files i can also share the data if i have the concept of network so fine i have one more advantage sharing is not only the advantage that i have the next advantage that i have is access to the remote database 
what exactly the meaning of access to the remote database all of you are trying to visit or all of you are trying to access your results online where exactly you have stored your results so it is stored in one database and the database is placed in the server so you are trying to access that particular server by sitting somewhere how it is possible with the help of the network so this is possible imagine all of you are chatting nowadays all of you are able to send the messages to each and everybody instantly so that is possible with the help of the concept of networking what we have that's one of the advantage that we have so along with this we have empty number of advantages like cost effectiveness i can reduce the cost a lot if i implement the concept of networking that's what you need to understand and also it helps me to enable or to have a smooth communication between one person to another person all these things adds up a weightage for the advantages if i have the networks so this is what you need to understand the basic concepts with respect to network so moving on to the next one what's the next one i have i have evolution of networking please listen to me carefully in the year 1969 especially the defense department of us started a private network especially for the defense department so they call that as a arpanet they call that as a arpanet it was made only for the defense purpose of us military so this gave a positive vibes that we can form something called network so in the later days we have the goal of the project which was connect to various universities and us defense so later on they extended this to different universities not only for the defense purpose then after that in the midst of 1980s a national science foundation they call this as nsf national science foundation so please remember they created new high capacity network and they will rename that or they will call that as nfs net so after nfs net what is the evolution that we came across so in the 1990 our favorite thing the internet came into the picture so after two different networks the concept of internet evolved in the year 1990 arpanet as well as nfs net plays a very important role to set the model for the internet this is what you have to remember when it comes to the evolution of internet so i have the arpanet in this slide so what exactly arpanet is all about so please remember the acronym for this arpanet advanced research project network agency so guys this was the first network that ever we had so this gave a positive vibes that even we can also have something called network and it was only for the us defense people and then after that later on they extended for other multiple universities so this is all about the arpanet so the next important thing that you have to remember is all about internet let me definitely not speak about this concept because all of you are very much familiar about this so let me not waste your time by discussing the same thing all right so the next concept that we have is interspace please understand interspace is a concept where you can let me give you the example can you all guess it so our zoom classes is an example for interspace that's what we call it as a interspace then what exactly interspace is all about please understand interspace is a client server software program that allows multiple users to communicate online with real time audio what is that we are using the client server architecture which allows you to interact real time 
So that's what you need to remember. So with the audio and video. So this is an example for Zoom classes. We call Zoom classes as interspace. This is what you need to understand. So please understand interspace provides the most advanced form of communication available on internet today. This is what we call it as a interspace. Moving on to the next one that we have, we have something called switching techniques. So we have something called switching technique. What exactly we call this as switching technique? Please listen to me carefully. Switching techniques are used to transmitting the data across the network. I know, sir, we are trying to transmit the data across the network. But how exactly we are transmitting? We are transmitting in a different, different ways. If you are transmitting in a different, different ways, for that different, different ways, we have named it. Each way has got a different name. So that is what I'm trying to discuss. The first way of transmitting the data is what I'm calling it as a circuit switching. The second way of transmitting the data is what I will call it as message switching and the last one is what I will call it as packet switching. In switching techniques, we have three different types of switching techniques, circuit switching, packet switching and message passing switching. This is what you need to understand. What exactly the circuit switching is all about? So can you all, can you discuss in detail about message switching? Yes, I will be discussing that in this slide. Before that, I will discuss what exactly circuit switching. Circuit switching, if you just read this, you will not understand. But let me tell you one important and interesting story to all of you. So imagine I have the notes. What is this I have? I have the notes. In a simple way, let us understand this concept. This is this node is what I will call it as a receiver. This node I will call it as a sender. So all these nodes are connected. So this is forming a network. Okay. All these nodes are connected. If the sender wants to send the data to the receiver, what exactly happens? So this will establish a dedicated channel. This will establish a dedicated virtual channel. So whatever the data that this sender wants to send to this receiver with the help of the virtual dedicated channel, the data will be transmitted. Once the data transmitted, then the virtual channel will be discarded. What is the use of this virtual path, virtual channel? Whatever the data that you are transmitting, so that data is safe and secure. If you are using the circuit switching, your data, whatever you are transmitting, it is reliable is what you need to understand. The chances of missing out the data is very, very less when it comes to the circuit switching is what you need to remember. So in the olden days, we were using the telephone landlines. In the beginning days, we were using the telephone landlines and the mobile technology as well. So whenever we were using that technology, the voice was very clear and there was no there was no disturbance and there was no lag. But nowadays, you, you can observe a lot of lags, a lot of breaks in your voice. Why? Because you are not using the dedicated channel between the caller and the callee. That is the reason your data is not sent to the sender, is it? To the receiver without missing out anything so it is not secure and reliable so suppose if you are using this circuit so your data whatever you are sending is reliable is what you need to remember that's very important that we need to understand so guys let's uh, go through what we have in this technique the first complete physical connection between two computers is established so please understand uh, it will establish the connection between two systems okay you can you can expect or you can imagine so all the time it is not possible to establish a physical connection we have to establish a virtual connection also but dedicated channel is what i would like to 
say to all of you at this point of time. All right. So the data can be transmitted once the source computer is ready to send the data to the destination computer that we have already discussed. And the important property of switching technique is to set up an end to end path connection between the computer before the data can be transmitted or sent is what you need to remember. All right, that, that we all know that. So hope you understood what exactly switching circuit is all about. If you understand switching circuit, then everything, whatever we have, I mean to say the packet switching as well as message passing switching. It's the people, a lot of people say that it's message switching and also we call that as message passing technique or message passing switching. All right, so let's discuss that one by one. I have packet switching. So what exactly packet switching is all about? Same thing, okay? Same diagram, okay? You need to understand. So I have the notes, I have the sender, and I have the receiver. How exactly things will happen in the packet switching? So please understand all your data will be broken down into packets. Your data is in the form of packets now. So this is the sender and this is the receiver. So if I start sending the packets, there is no predefined path to the receiver. I have not mentioned anywhere that the packets should travel in this particular path. It can take any path. The packets can also go like this. Packet can go like this. Packet can go like this. Any path it can select. Any packets can select any path. For example, the first packet is traveling in this path. Suppose the node is not working. So there is a chance of missing out my data at this point of time. So some of the packets are traveling in this path. Okay, that path is shortest path and it might reach little early than any other path. So all these problems I will come across if I am using the packet switching. I am using the packet switching. Quickly let's understand what I have. Packet switching can be seen as an option that tries to combine the advantages of circuit and message switching. All right, maximizes the disadvantages of both. So in packet switching, the message is broken down into smaller parts of packets. That's what you need to understand. A fixed size of packets which can be transmitted across the network is specified. So fine, we understood what is circuit switching and we also understood what is packet switching. Then what is the last one that we have? We have something called message switching. What exactly message switching is all about? See, for example, imagine the same network. This is the nodes that I have. This is the nodes that I have. Please understand this is the network that I have. Okay. Let's say I have one more node here and it is connected to all the other nodes. What will happen here? I have a switching office. I have a switching office. Let us imagine like this. This is the sender and this is the receiver. Suppose the sender is sending the package. What will happen? All the package will come to the switching office first. It will store all the package. Once it receives the package, then it will forward it to the receiver. So here we need to understand when it comes to the message switching. So we use the technique called store and forward. We use the technique called store and forward once we are started using the concept of message switching. So we understood when it comes to the circuit switching, we established a dedicated channel to transmit the data from sender to receiver. We understood when we come to the packet switching, we break down the data into smaller packets and we transmit the data from sender to receiver, but there is no predefined path. We also understood we have message switching. We are passing the data. We are passing the data to the switching office first and it will store the data and then it will forward the data. So we are using the store and forward technique here. Briefly, you got the different idea about the different switching techniques that we have. So what is the next one that we have? What is the next concept that we have? So let's understand the different terminologies that we use. So especially you need to understand the measurement units here. 
so what is that we need to understand we need to understand the measurement units here so measurement units all of you know about it so it's pretty easy so guys one byte is equal to eight bits how many bits for one byte we use eight bits for one byte in the same way we have one kb is equal to 1024 bytes one mb is equal to 1024 kb so guys i think i have listed only a few so you have a lot okay i want all of you to check out the what is for gigabyte what is for terabytes all those things all right so i think uh, i have come to the so the next one that i have is data transfer rate and bandwidth what exactly data transfer rate and bandwidth let's understand one by one bandwidth before i discuss bandwidth let's start understanding data transfer rate data in the name itself you will be able to understand data I'm trying to transfer okay I need to measure how much the data I'm transferring based on what let's understand that the amount of data transferred the amount of data transferred in one direction please understand the amount of data transferred in one direction over link divided by the time taken to transfer it the amount of data transferred in one direction in a link is divided by the time taken to transfer it so that will give you the data transfer rate say for example the data rate defines the number of data elements sent in one second the unit is bits per second units is bits per second so data transfer rate is calculated by bits per second how many bits that you have transmitted in one second is what we call it as a data transmission rate so that's what we need to calculate whenever we are transmitting the data so fine we understood what is data transfer rate so how many bits that you are trying to transmit in one direction in link per second is what we are trying to calculate data transfer rate okay so the next topic that we have is bandwidth when it comes to bandwidth we have we measure in two ways what are the two ways please understand bandwidth can be used to two different contexts what is that two different contexts with two different measuring values one is with the bandwidth in hertz is the range of frequency contained what is the range of frequency contained is the first thing that you have to remember what is the range of frequency contained in the composite signals I repeat what is the range of frequency contained in the composite signals is the first way whenever we are trying to find out the bandwidth the range of frequency please understand the word range of frequency so fine the second one is range of frequency channel can pass you need to understand I'm speaking with respect to the channel now the range of frequency the channel can pass is the second one that you need to understand with respect to bandwidth so range of frequency that the channel can pass and please understand the bandwidth in hertz the range of frequency contained in the composite signals in that signals what is the range of frequency is one thing and the second thing is if i have the channel the channel can transmit what range of frequency that is the second one so this is all about the bandwidth that you need to understand so we have discussed data transmission rate and also bandwidth so by saying this i have come to an end of this session so hope i have discussed most important and useful information for all of you so please like and share the video thank you bye bye